Welcome to the podcast, Steve. Hi, Peter. Great, uh, great, to, great to talk with you, and uh, thanks for having me. My pleasure. Great to talk with you. I know we uh, we met many years ago. You've had some. You've had a really interesting background, hitting some of the the biggest names in fintech uh, in your career. So, why don't we get started by giving the listeners a little bit of background about some of the some of the stops in your career to date? Sure. Yeah, I started my career in traditional banking. I actually uh, interned at the Federal Reserve, got me really interested in the money and banking system, started mm-hmm. in traditional banking with, with a, a, a couple of different large banks, uh, and found myself increasingly attracted to the idea of using data and technology to provide better solutions for consumers and small businesses who you know desperately need help making smarter decisions around their money, ultimately feeling more confident about their money. So, of course, that led me to fintech. Um, and it le- led me to a, a company that was one of the original, uh, one of the original fintechs uh, distributing a, a, what was private student loans, um, largely digitally. Um, and that was before the 2008 meltdown. I, and I, 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 that was a brief pit stop just to try to restructure that company. And that became starting my own company uh, that, that focuses on, on data and, and, and better uh, portfolio management services, largely around the education finance space. Um, I ran that company for, for four years and, and had an opportunity to be able to transition leadership of that company that still very much exists and thrives today, but uh, transition that leadership to another one of my co-founders um, and join PayPal. Uh, and I had a unique opportunity to, to build out PayPal's uh, credit business and and be a part of the, the PayPal's growing payments ecosystem on both the consumer and the small business side. It also included you know starting what became PayPal Working Capital, PayPal's small business lending uh, business. And then uh, after uh, nearly five years at PayPal, had an incredible opportunity to go and and uh, and join Lending Club as president of Lending Club, um, and, and what eventually became Lending Club buying a bank, being one of the, the, the first fintechs to, to have what we call a marketplace bank. Uh, did that for about three years. Um, and then you know, really had a built a particular passion around the, 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 the small business, the need in small business, which I, I found to be especially unmet in the marketplace. And, and that, that focusing on, on small business, um, is what led me to uh, another stop at a place called Blue Vine, um, really well known for small business lending, but also started uh, uh, started with small business banking. Uh, offered a small business banking product that today now has uh, generated over a billion dollars in in small business deposits. I found it really interesting that opportunity to to at the intersection of lending and banking for small business. And then uh, after about a year and a half with with Blue Vine, uh, kind of. All roads led me back to a place that I first encountered at PayPal, uh, partnered with again at, at, at in a couple of different capacities at Lending Club, and then partnered with again at at uh, at, at Blue Vine, and that's of course Funding Circle, um, where you know, and it, I mean I joined Funding Circle earlier this year um, in order to you know take what is a a tremendous business focused on on providing capital that small businesses need to to, to win. Um, and and using it as a, as a platform to be able to do a lot more, helping small businesses be successful here in the United States. Mm-hmm. So then, what would you say, like you, like PayPal, Lending Club, Blue Vine, all, all you know, marquee names in fintech? What are some of the lessons you've learned along the way that you've brought to Funding Circle? I mean, one of the key things to me that differentiates um, you know, fintech from traditional uh, from traditional financial services is not just the obvious, the, the, the focus on on data and technology, but it's the it's the customer centricity that just comes with the way that a a, a, a fintech company thinks. I think it's a focus on on product solutions that solve real uh, problems that that the customers have. Leveraging oftentimes data and technology, but this the, the, starting the starting the discovery process really from a true customer pain point or a true customer need, and then building solutions uh, specifically for that need is to me one of the great common threads across every stop I've had along the way in in, in fintech. Uh, but that said, I think we're just at the beginning of the journey, Peter. Frankly, I, I think we haven't yet. 
um, fulfilled the promise of anywhere near optimizing or best leveraging data and technology to be able to help consumers and small businesses make better decisions and have more confidence around their money. So I think the, the best is still in front of us. Right, right. I would agree with that. So so then you you arrived at Funding Circle. Maybe we could just talk about what was the the driving force for that decision? What was really, what attracted you to Funding Circle? Yeah, it's simple. I mean, in each one of the stops, when I was at, at, at PayPal, again, at Lending Club, and, and, and again, at, at, at Bluevine, um, what, I, what I saw in Funding Circle was a unique ability to be able to efficiently and effectively assess the credit risk of a, an established small business. So Funding Circle plays in a somewhat unique space. Uh, within small business lending, really doing lower rate, more like bank quality small business lending to establish small businesses where a lot of the other fintech players are playing in the riskier, uh, at the riskier end of, of the credit spectrum. And that bank quality, more assessing the credit worthiness of a more established business who's looking to borrow, you know, in Funding Circle's case, up to a half a million dollars um, in, in the form of a loan. Um, you know, that, that's been uh, back to my traditional banking days now. That's been the 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 the, the great enigma. In fact, when I was at Wells Fargo, <laughs> actually called this the invisible middle. I said, you know, banks are really traditional financial services, and banks are really good at you know helping understand credit and providing uh, solutions for the needs of consumers. And you know, pretty good at, at at doing the same for large enterprises, but small businesses really kind of fall out of of, of the middle. Uh, and the reason for that is it's it's incredibly complex right. to try to understand and efficiently underwrite the risk of a small business. And so when when I through my travels, uh, you know, Funding Circle just kept popping up as somebody who's pretty uniquely cracked the code on being able to combine not just automation and and good credit modeling uh, but also balancing that with the the, the 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 selected targeted manual intervention that you really need to do the human touch that you need to have in in combination with the best automation uh, to be able to you know like I said efficiently efficiently and effectively manage understand underwrite and manage the risk of a more established small business looking to borrow more money so it's that particular strength of funding circles uh combined with what i still think is one of the most urgent unmet needs in broader financial services uh which is serving the financial needs of small businesses uh it's the opportunity that i think uh exists at the intersection of those two things that you know pretty uniquely uh stands out uh, makes funding circle pretty uniquely stand out right right yep yep for sure so then Maybe we can just explain for the listeners that are that, that are not clear. Um, what are what does lending club? Well, sorry, what is funding circle? I'm gonna I'm gonna actually edit that out. So editor, please remove that. Um, okay, so let's talk about what funding circle is actually providing. Can you maybe just talk about the um, the different types of, of loan products that you offer? Sure. Uh, so, so Funding Circle really focuses on an unsecured term loan product uh, up to five hundred thousand um, dollars. Funding Circle has made more than four and a half billion dollars of credit available through that through that product uh, since its founding, uh, and that's just in the U.S. Funding Circle globally also, of course, operates in the United Kingdom. Uh, and the total global number is over $21 billion that's been lent to date. Uh, but here in the U.S., uh, $4.5 billion to date been originated through that unsecured uh, you know, term loan product, uh, effectively un unsecured term loan product, I, I should say. Uh, like many loans of, of this size, um, you know, th th there is a UCC lien um, associated with the loan, but it effectively functions as, a, as an unsecured product. Um, and, and through that product, Funding Circle has lent more than four and a, four and a half billion dollars to date to, and, and served more than forty five thousand businesses. Um, so that that's really the core focus of Funding Circle to help small businesses get access to the credit they need to win through a best in class uh, installment loan product targeted at more established small businesses looking to borrow up to half a million dollars. Right. Right. Okay. So then let's talk about. Underwriting, you, you mentioned that, you know, small businesses are complex and um, every small business is different and you've got, you know, you've obviously got the different, different markets, different sub segments. Um, 
you know, different qualities of, of owners of companies, but I'd love to kind of get a sense of, of your approach here. And, you know, we've, we've had a lot of progress. It feels like to me in data availability over the last decade is, has improved dramatically, but I'd love to kind of get a sense of how you're sort of processing that data. Maybe you could touch on if, how you're using AI in, in, in this part of your business. Um, yeah. What's your, what's your approach to underwriting? Yeah, so the, it, it all revolves around uh, better um, understanding and measuring a business's ability to pay. Um, so unlike on the consumer side where uh, credit bureau data can allow you to be able to have a, a very accurate um, a, a very accurate prediction of, of, of credit risk uh, without really measuring ability to pay. On the small business side, both because of necessity, because the bureaus are not as um, as as well tested uh, as on the, on the consumer side, but also because it just makes sense to do. If you can leverage some of the technology that you mentioned, or you referenced that that allows us to be able to see uh, cash bank bank data uh, linked to automatically link to a, a bank account and and view real time bank data, cash transaction data, cash on deposits, uh, trends, the drivers of those things. Uh, you know that, that's going to allow us to be able to you know much more accurately measure the true financial condition and ability to pay than uh, you know just the information that's reported to a, a, a credit bureau. Uh, which is still largely, you know, for for loans of, of, of up to this size, um, you know, largely what, what what the consumer credit space is going to rely on much more heavily than than what we're doing today at, for small businesses at Funding Circle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you know, we're recording this in mid December, and um, we're also the year is almost out, but we still got a little bit of time left. But, but I'd like to get a sense of when you look back at twenty twenty three. What has loan demand been like? I mean, I feel like the small business sector has just had this crazy run the last four years. Um, has has this year been a normal year? Uh, no, this year has been anything, <laughs> but, uh, anything but a normal year. I, I, I think sometimes we interest rates have been so low for so long. Oh yeah, of course, zero percent interest yeah. rates. Um, you know, we, th this run up that we've had in interest rates of effectively 550 basis point increase uh, over the last, you know, less than two years is a larger increase in inc interest rates than we've seen, you know, in 40 plus years in, in that period of time, uh, in this short of a period of time. So, you know, when the, the, the core cost of what the product that you're that you're selling so dramatically uh, uh, goes up in such a short period of time, of course, that's going to have, you know, massive impacts. Uh, on on the business, on on demand, um, and on the ability to be able to you know match uh, even a best in class product with you know quality applicants um, you know who who need access to funding. So yeah, everything kind of has has you know changed a, a bit this year, uh, starting with that um, that that change in underlying interest rates, but also just because you know the economy I think has become a lot less certain since the pandemic. I mean, we really haven't gotten anything, haven't gotten back to what I would consider kind of a normal steady state if there's ever such a thing uh, since the, the the massive disruption that was the pandemic. Um, so things have changed a lot. But in the face of that change, you know one thing has remained constant, which is there's still a lot of demand. For small businesses that you know need to smooth over uneven cash flow and you know need access to uh, low-priced capital to be able to run and grow their business, take advantage of opportunities to be able to you know invest in a new location or expand inventory or hire. Um, so so th 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 they're in the face of all this uncertainty and the, the the underlying interest rates changing so dramatically in such a short period of time. You know we've still seen. Uh, you know, completed applications go up 54% year over year. Wow. Uh, so there, there's still quite a bit of demand. I mean, part of that too is, is you know, what we're doing, um, you know, what we're doing to, to drive growth. We're still very much in, in growth mode for funding circle in the, in the U S um, but, you know, I think that, that, that when you look at that kind of a, a year over year improvement, it's a pretty good indication that there's still healthy demand. Um, right. So, so despite the interest rates, people are still, willing to pay uh you know a higher rate than you know just to get to get their funding needs met obviously i don't think anyone expects us to be paying the same rates that we we're paying in 2021 but um right. you know so clearly that, that's i mean 
I, I, I look at that as a positive that we, that the business, you know, the business environment, you guys with, with, you know, with applications up so much, that's, I mean, obviously you're doing a lot of, I'm sure you're doing a lot of marketing, but so, so is that like when you started the year, obviously no one really knew exactly where we'd end the year in January. I know, you know, we knew that interest rates weren't going to probably be cut anytime soon, but is that, you, you, you said you're in growth mode. So you had planned and uh, to be growing this year, regardless of the interest rate environment. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, candidly, we, 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 we plan for even more growth uh, right. this year. So although we've had, you know, uh, over 50% year over year increase in applications, um, you know, we've also seen a healthy increase in the actual offers for credit we've made, but the offers for credit have grown at a lower rate. So whereas we've had a 54% year over year increase in completed applications, uh, we've had a 35% year over year increase in offers. And that's a function of two things. It's a, it's a function of the, the credit quality of those who are applying, um, especially as credit gets more expensive. Um, the, 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 anybody who can wait for, uh, wait for potentially rates to come back down, uh, might be more inclined to wait, uh, for, for, for rates to come back down. Um, and, and you know, if you, if you don't have the luxury of waiting, uh, th then you, 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 might be more inclined to, to apply right now, irrespective of rate. But of course that, that, that that's going to also be a function of the, the current state of your uh, of your your business and your financial conditions and therefore your likelihood to pay the loan back. So that as certainly one of the things is just you know a shift in in quality of that application mix. Um, but then the other thing is that you know like any prudent lender, when you've got a time where there is a lot more uncertainty in the economy, you've also got to be you know more prudent and tighten your lending standards uh, so that you 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 know you're not going to be making uh, loans that are not going to perform. Understood. So, um, I want to talk about the big news from I think it was uh, a couple of months ago now. But uh, the the SBA um, for the first time in I don't think it was like four decades had issued new SBA seven A licenses. Maybe you could just explain what an SBA seven A license is and what actually you got approved for. Yeah, this is a really big deal, deal Peter. This is what and I couldn't be more excited about our our ability going forward to be able to bring really compelling value to entrepreneurs and small businesses through better access to what is already a best in class product in SBA. So, you know, the SBA most people know is among the, if not the lowest cost source of capital for most small businesses in the United States. Um, so the, the, the issue with the SBA is that because it's only offered through through banks and a very select a very limited number of small business lending corporations licensed by the SBA to make those SBA loans there, for the last 41 years there's only been 14 SBLC licenses um, uh, you know, that the the, the um, that are allowed to be able to make uh, through the SBA um, uh, SBA 7A loans. Um, and because of that, and because of the fact that the process is lengthy and not particularly designed with a you know digital first uh, um, with a digital first approach, uh, the other thing that people know about the SBA besides that it's reliable access to low cost capital is it it's it's slow. It, it takes right. a long time. It, it's it usually requires up to you know fifty documents and and weeks many times to be able to get access to to the to, to loans that's once you've applied and just the act of applying itself uh usually involves a largely paper-based very very manually intensive process so what 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 we're seeking to do is um take advantage of an opportunity now to be able to bring a lot of what funding circle uniquely does really well um w which is um, bring a, a product that is digitally native um, and was designed to be fast and, and easy in a digital environment, bring that to the, to, to the SBA. So we can combine the, the, the speed and ease and, and, and digital experience that Funding Circle has become known for with the low cost access to, to reliable capital that the SBA is known for. I think the combination of those two uh, is what the 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 new SBLC license 
affords us to do. And we think the potential for it is going to be, you know, transformational for, for small businesses and, and maybe even for small business lending across America. Right. And um, so what's the status of that? Like, when can you start doing your own small business or SBA loans? Because I know, I mean, you go to your website, you've, you've been doing seven, seven A loans, it seems like for a while, obviously not under your own your own right. license so what but, but tell us what's the what's the status of of, of doing your own right what, what funding circle has done to date has been simply to refer customers who who know about sba and and who who want sba as an alternative to the products that funding circle offers directly will refer that customer to an existing sbl uh, 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 existing sblc or bank that they can make uh, uh small business loans today um, that's what Funding Circle has done in, in the past. Going forward, once we actually have the, the license, and what the SBA announced last month was the intent to award that license, uh, the SBA has to do a, a final exhaustive review of a number of policy documents and some other you know, steps that validate that intent to, to provide the license, and then they'll actually grant the license. They haven't provided a specific time frame to be able to do it, but our hope is that it's, it's imminent. Uh, you know, very, very shortly into the new year, into 2024, we should have that license granted. And then we have the ability to start actually directly making uh, SBA loans. Um, and on our approach, like I mentioned before, is going to be to bring the best of funding circle, our ability to be able to bring those loans in through a digital experience that's going to be faster and easier than what any applicant has experienced before and looking for, to, to get access to SBA funding. So hopefully we can we can start doing that uh, very soon after the uh, very soon after the new year. Okay, well let's hope so. So um, I want to talk about lending as a service because I've seen you I've seen articles um, about you guys you know working with company companies like Customers Bank, um, Pitney Bowes, who's obviously a non bank, you know Dream Springs, another one I've seen. What tell us a little bit about what you're trying to do there? What's the strategy? So the idea with, with with lending as a service, and even you know an offshoot of that is is embedded finance. Um, you know both areas that we're we're really excited about bringing again the best of funding circle, the ability to be able to have access to a designed in the digital world application experience. Shoot, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> why don't you start? We'll, 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 why don't you start from the top again, Steve? So all right, yeah, sorry about that. Let me uh, let me make sure that's not going to just continue. Maybe okay. Right Okay, so I just I hit pause for a little bit there, but um, what uh, I'll I'll ask you the question again. Okay, so I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about lending as a service. You know, I've seen um, you know, articles about you guys working with the likes of Customers Bank, Pitney Bowes, and DreamSpring. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing there and what's the strategy. Great. Yeah. I mean, lending as a service and 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 another kind of um, adjacency with lending as a service, the, the idea of embedded finance um, is something that, you know, both are areas that we're, we're really excited about. And, and the idea with both is bringing the best of funding circle, the ability to be able to um, bring a digital experience to both apply for and you know, get access to a best in class credit product in, uh, in, a, in a fast and, and easy way uh, on your computer or mobile device. We want to be able to bring that to more you know, banks, financial service institutions, and frankly, other companies that have large bases of small business customers who can value from getting that access that Funding Circle spent more than a decade, um, access to small business uh, uh, credit that Funding Circle spent more than a, uh, more than a decade developing. Um, what we find is that you know banks are struggling to meet the needs of their small business customers, um, and and other uh, companies are are looking to provide their. Oh man, that's all right. Just keep going. You can't really hear much. That's so okay. other companies. Still... 
and other companies are, are looking to provide financing solutions for their for their small business customers who uh, are, are hungry to find ways to be able to feel more confident about their money. Um, so, so our view is that we can bring the the the, the, the application and lending experience. Uh, that Funding Circle has developed, designed, and developed and honed over the past ten years uh, to to banks that have banks and other companies that have strong bases of small business customers who could benefit from access to that service. And we think that's even enhanced uh, in the world where you know we'll be offering not only a, a small business. Uh, lending product, but but uh, the, also the, the a, a traditional small business lending product, but also for the uh, SBA product as well, the SBA wow. loan product as well. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. So, you know, you mentioned that you uh, you know you have uh, this one funding circle was started in the UK, and um, still obviously very active there. One of the largest uh, lenders um, period in the in the UK. The small business. Um, how how much do you interact with the with the UK office these days? I mean, do you do you sort of act pretty much independently, or are you in regular contact with uh, with the people over there? It's really a little bit of both, Peter. I, I think we we have the best of both worlds now. I mean, we have the, the benefit of of having access to a lot of the resources of a of a global company. Um, and in many ways, we've got a, an opportunity to draft off of and, and adapt, uh, you know, adopt best practices uh, from the UK market. Uh, you know, where Funding Circle is larger uh, in, in the UK market than what, what we, we do in the in the US today. So, I have a lot of the access to those resources and best practices, and of course, incredible people. Um, but also, there's a recognition that you know the US and the UK are two very different markets. Uh, so we, we we do have you know quite a bit of autonomy and independence to be able to make sure that the solutions that we create uh, and the and the decisions that we make are uh, with our customer in mind. You know the the U.S. entrepreneur, U.S. small business owner, uh, specifically in mind. Right, right, okay. So tell us about some of the the new hires that you've got. I, I know I noticed one. Uh, one former Goldman Sachs uh, person who uh, we know reasonably well, and uh, to tell us a little bit about you know the state of the executive team at uh, at Funding Circle. Yeah, we've made some some uh, great additions over the the, the past uh, ten months that I've I've been here um, to the Funding Circle leadership team, including uh, Conti Mataya, who's somebody who worked with me at at PayPal, um, and Conti runs product for us uh, here in the US and has just done an amazing job uh, in, in just a few months now, um, already building out an entirely new product roadmap discipline for, for Funding Circle. Um, and then most recently you alluded to Kaz Joshi, uh, we, we were able to attract from, from Goldman Sachs and Kaz ran the embedded finance uh, business at Goldman Sachs for small businesses, um, including a, a very large relationship with, uh, with, with Amazon. Um, so so we're, we're very fortunate to have um, you know, not only Kaz and Conti uh, on board here in the U.S., but, but uh, a number of a number of leaders within Funding Circle in the U.S. and even a couple from the U.K. Uh, that are totally dedicated to the to, to the U.S. business and help us uh, help us chart a course for growth going forward. Right. Okay. So I want to I want to talk about regulation beyond beyond the SBA, and obviously we also. Um, we operate with a you know a lot of state regulatory frameworks. Um, there seems to me that there's been movement for more transparency um, in small business lending. You know, having you know we have the Truth in Lending Act for consumer loans. There, there is no national equivalent to that, at least not yet. But there are some state. Um, you know, I think your state in California is uh, is one that's sort of taking a, a lead here. What? What do you? What would you like to see um, when it comes to more transparency? And is is there a regular regulatory solution that we that we should be pushing for? Um, in general, Peter. I mean, obviously, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of of change uh, and, and now and in, in, always, right? right? The only constant is is change in in our space. In general, and certainly with regard to to you know, you know regulatory areas of focus, 
Um, but you know, the, the one thing I think that represents the, the the biggest opportunity for us is just to continue to to leverage this sort of running head start that we have with small business lending in particular, making better use of the data and in, insights and information that we increasingly have uh, as the world continues to digitize. We've got data in you know actionable, efficient, actionable form to be able to actually measure the financial condition, the financial stability and the financial health of a small business. And if we've got the ability to be able to get access to those data and better turn them into insights, um, and then it's, it's, it's incumbent upon us to be able to translate that back to a small business so that they can better understand what makes their businesses tick and make better decisions. Uh, which ultimately should lead to more financial stability and hopefully, you know, more growth, more positive cash flow generation from that business going forward. And if we're doing that right, then shouldn't that picture be perfectly linked to the business's access to to credit and the terms that they have to pay for that credit? Um, that's the world that I get the most excited about when it doesn't need to be a big mystery. Credit doesn't need to be a black box. Um, and, and and what a small business can do to be able to impact their ability to get access to, you know, confidence, certain access to credit on the best terms doesn't need to be a big mystery. It just needs to be a better understanding and then a better ability to be able to manage those levers that make their business more financially stable and ultimately will help their business, you know, win in the marketplace and therefore, uh, you know, grow. Uh, grow profitably and, and and grow free cash flow over the future, uh, into the future. I think that that's the the ability to be able to do that um, is where you know regulators have a lot of uh, a, a lot of a lot of space to be able to help us ultimately make sure that we're getting access to the data that can allow us to be able to bring that clearer picture to uh, to 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 the to the to the minds of small business um and, and then make sure that we you know we we use that res responsibly for the benefit of the small businesses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so as we wrap up here last question i mean this 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 um episode as it, it will be released in in january and so we'll be into 2024 okay. um what is what is top of mind for funding circle in the new year for Funding Circle in 2024, everything is going to be about uh, how we can effectively uh, launch and scale the SBA uh, 7A product that we'll be making directly with the new SBA license. I think we've got a, a, a truly transformational opportunity to bring you know, the, the best of Funding Circle, the ability to be able to, to get access to the credit that a small business needs to win more quickly more easily and in, in formats that are more digital and, and, and to deliver a, a better digital experience overall and combine that with the you know low cost access to capital that the SBA is ha, is and it has been for a long time will continue to be reliably known for. I think bringing those th two things together uh, is a really unique opportunity for us and that's going to be our predominant focus. Okay, well, We'll have to leave it there, Steve. Um, always great to chat with you. Thank you so much for coming on the show and best of luck with that new SBA license. Thank you very much, Peter. Been a pleasure. See ya.